led us here today to build the racial capitalist system. And while they were doing that, they were distracting us from what was going on back here. So when we talk about the 16th century, the 18th century, when we talk about the scramble for Africa, we're talking about colonial officers that knew they had to find a place to exploit because back home, people were ready to riot. Things weren't good here. So what did they export? They exported a feudal system to the African coastline, to the African shores, and they allowed themselves to trade human beings. I don't think we take that in enough when we understand that human beings, whole human beings, were uprooted, displaced, and sent around the world to places that they did not call home. And the stories of their resistance are never talked about. The hundreds of rebellions are never talked about. The Maroons aren't taught about in my history lessons. We're not taught about the Haitian Revolution. We're not taught about black power movements in the UK because they don't want us to know about black power movements in the UK. They don't tell us the name of Obi Buna. Why don't they tell us the name of Obi Buna? Because he has a manifesto, because he has a voice and he articulated some of the pains that we are still articulating to this day and we're having to recover these voices ourselves. So when we speak, understand that we are speaking from a pace of history, of heritage, and we are telling the truth. If you don't believe us, then you're on the wrong side of history. So what I'm here today is just to say, to share to my siblings and to all the family here, a brief and very simple Pan-African message. All of us here are African people, that's Africa with a K. When you look around to the person next to you, I want you to say to the person next to you, that's a little thought experiment, just look to the person next to you and say, I love you, you are my sibling. <laughs> if we're not able to do that, I have, I have a theory, I have a theory. If we do not have the, the courage in our hearts to look to the person that's next to us right now today and say, I love you, my sibling, then we do not have an ounce of the courage that's needed to stand in solidarity with our African brothers and sisters who are suffering every single day for the privileges that we are enjoying right this minute. If we can't do that now, when are we going to do that? If we can't do that now, how can we pretend to talk about solidarity with people who are dying on the streets every single day? Poverty is a pandemic. It is a racist pandemic. Hunger is a racist pandemic. When we were talking about Black Lives Matter, this imagery, if you all close your eyes for just five seconds and imagine the imagery of Black Lives Matter, perhaps you've got images of, of brothers and sisters like Apollo Sankara and myself and the sister Adetola and Auntie Esther, people who've been in this struggle for a long time. Perhaps you have that image of black people rioting on the streets of London, in Portland, in the US, in Australia, around the world. Perhaps all of our imagery is attached to the global north. But if we aren't closing our eyes and saying Black Lives Matter, and it means that the black lives and the Afrophobia, that means that our African sisters are having to go through the same exploitative practices that are being practiced and perfected over centuries, then black lives don't matter. We can't begin to say black lives matter until black lives in the Niger Delta matter. We can't say black lives matter until the black lives in Somalia matter. We can't say black lives matter until our people who are being repressed in South Africa matter. The apartheid system is not done, it is a global apartheid system. And the global majority is bearing the brunt of the responsibility of our wasteful ways, of our wasteful practices, of our exploitation. So we've got a lot of work to do. And that work starts with decolonization. There is no post-colonial world without a world that is first decolonized. So when we talk about Palestine and our sisters and our siblings there, who are still under the same um, forces of oppression of colonialism, that has not changed. When the Guyanese people receive a ton of waste for every ton of oil that they export, that is neo-colonial oppression. And that is happening now, today. So the work we have to do is big. And let's not pretend that the work we have to do isn't a lot and that it isn't overwhelming. But the only way we do that is by standing in solidarity as a community together. So when we look around and we look at the love that we have here today, that is born out of our shared heritage, out of, coming, out of understanding our, our same um, descendants, knowing that where we come from, then it is on the backs of those people that we are standing today to be able to deliver these quite simple messages. And they are messages of emancipation, they are, mas they are messages of liberation, and they are, ma they are messages of reparation now. And what does reparation mean? Because we've spent a lot of time, in fact I've come a bit late, so Auntie Esther probably smashed this on the head, I know no, she knows what she's doing. But we should now know and take away something today about what reparations actually means. We, don't, we can't afford to talk about reparations like it's a joke, like it's some money that we're waiting to get, or some charity sessions that are going from the global north to the global south. Brother, I'm coming to your question in a little bit, I promise. How old am I? I'm 21. 
But what I will say is that's not relevant because this history and this knowledge is not mine. None of this is about an individual effort. This is all a community. So when I speak, I don't speak for myself. And if I'm speaking for myself, you should be booing me off this stage. Because right now we have a time to only uplift and amplify the voices of our people who are being oppressed all around the world. Where was I? Decolonization, the process of decolonization. So the work we're doing in Oxford, just to give a brief history, is about decolonizing the space, the institution and curriculum of Oxford University and beyond, as well as its implications in the city. There are many things that have come out of this that we still need to address. It's not just about representation. When we say decolonization, we mean decolonization and not diversity. <laughs> diversity doesn't mean anything if you put people into a place where they are underrepresented to be tokens to experience the same squeezing pressure of these same um, um, atmospheres and, and spaces. We don't have time to do that. And planetary repairs and reparation is about repairing these spaces and repairing the, the environment around us such that everyone has a space to thrive. And that's about looking at ourselves as a global community. I feel like I'm rambling and I'm ruffling. But what I will say is this, <laughs> that reparations is not a joke. Reparations is about a survival. Reparations is about how sincerely we care to survive the 21st century as a global community. Reparations means healing the wounds, the psychoses that we've spent building up into our own minds. You can't decolonize society around yourself without decolonizing your own mind first. And that means to have some very frank conversations and be uncomfortable because this has been uncomfortable for a very long time. I think that's all I will really share. I will share one last thing actually, I'll tell a lie which is that what we are trying to do right now is create a movement, a movement that doesn't just speak for the voices in the diaspora, a movement that amplifies and says and amplifies the voice of the struggle and makes transparent all the links that mean that what we're enjoying today is at the very, is off the exploitation and gained off the exploitation of other people. If you represent an institution or force or group that cares about planetary repairs and cares about solidarity with our African siblings, come speak to us because what we are doing today and what we are creating is a movement, an organization, a solidarity bound front along which we cannot be ignored because when we speak, we are speaking in line with and alongside our, our sisters and siblings and brothers around the world who are all experiencing the same things, but I promise you a whole lot worse. That is our job, that is our duty in the 21st century. If we don't do that, we will not survive. And that is simply it. Thank you very much. Black Lives Matter.